Hello everybody! First of all, I want to say I'm sorry if this video is shaky. Normally, I balance my tripod on my laptop, but um, I'm using my laptop for today's video. You already saw the title. Um, I thought that since I'm going to be going back to school, technically I'm going back to school next week. I'm going to be in Chicago, but my classes don't actually start until the following week. But since next week's video is going to be a vlog, traveling to Chicago, I figured that this week was the best time for this video, which is talking about my accommodations. Um, I, no one asked me for this video, but I know that for me, going through accommodations, like going through and trying to decide what accommodations would be helpful for me was very difficult so I'm gonna talk in this video about my accommodations and hopefully that helps you figure out um, your accommodations for school. Your accommodations are gonna be different than mine. I have different disabilities than you have and my disabilities affect me in different ways than yours affect you so please note that this is specifically to me, my case. Um, I guess that I'll tell you a little bit about myself because I don't know if you're watching this and you don't know about me and this is your first video that popped up so I think that might be important. So my name is Leia. I am a master's student at a college in downtown Chicago. Well I say I am. I will be in in a week and a half when, when school starts. A master's student in downtown Chicago. I have multiple disabilities. Kind of the ones that you need to understand for this video is I have hypermobility spectrum disorder, autism, diabetes and bipolar disorder. Those are kind of the four big diagnoses. I have other things like miserable malalignment syndrome uh, that aren't as relevant to this video, but those are kind of the four main disabilities that are relevant to this video here. Because I'm a student with disabilities, I qualify to have accommodations and there's a difference between accommodations and modifications. Modifications are what you get through an IEP, which is something that you will have if you are a student in grades kindergarten through 12. Um, my relationship with 5014s and IEPs are complicated, so when I was younger, I had an IEP because I had a speech uh, difficulty, and that IEP outlined my speech therapy. And then from, I want to say, 9th grade to 11th grade, I didn't have any type of disability accommodations. And then in 12th grade, I was diagnosed with autism. And in 12th grade, I had a 504 plan, which is a disability accommodations plan that is an alternative to an IEP. Um, IEPs can offer modifications where the assignments are made less difficult. However, a 504 plan only does modifications, and at the um, college level, so whether you're a undergrad or a grad student, you only have the option to have a 504. So what a 504 does is it makes it to where essentially you have the same opportunities to be successful as other students because it recognizes that students with disabilities, I, I like the phrase that Jessica Kelgren Fawzer uses, I forgot what video she uses it in, but she says people who have further to run need better shoes, and that's the way that I see these accommodations. Um, uh, it's more difficult for me to do certain things because of things like my hypermobility spectrum disorder and how it affects my hands, and um, my autism, how it affects certain things for me. So. I thought that I would just get into this and kind of go through my accommodations list. So if you're looking to get accommodations uh, from your school, what I would recommend doing is contacting the Disability Services Office. I've had mixed results with contacting Disability Services. Um, when I Obviously I started when I was in high school and that worked pretty well for that semester. And then the next semester I was at a community college. 
And again, it worked well. I have an accommodation that apparently I didn't actually qualify for for Roosevelt. Uh, that was very helpful for me, but some of these accommodations, one in particular, is an accommodation that I find was really helpful for me in high school and probably would have been quite helpful for me throughout my undergrad career because I have autism and we'll get into it in a minute. But um, I didn't have accommodations for most of the time that I was in gra in undergrad, and that's because like I was not diagnosed with bipolar disorder. People did not know that I had an eating disorder. Um, my hypermobility spectrum disorder didn't impact me as much, and also I like. So this is gonna sound weird, but I don't really remember taking a lot of classes where I took notes. Like, I was in mostly discussion seminars for my last two years of college and kind of, I kind of defined my college time by my last two years in college, which were when I was taking my major classes. And those were mostly discussion seminars and I think that we sometimes had books. We had books for some of them, but I didn't do a lot of reading, like, I was not the best student, but I still got really good grades. I didn't use these accommodations in undergrad, but I think that it's going to be helpful to have them as an option as a grad student. Um, I, I don't know, I, th I think that they're going to be helpful for me. And like I said, this is not cheating, it's not wanting things easier. In some instances, I do think that this is going to be... One sec. I think that in some cases these accommodations are more like real life. Like, I can't imagine that being a city manager, that my city council is going to say, no, Leia, you can't, uh, you can't take notes in this meeting on your laptop. You can only take notes with pen and paper. Like, I uh, don't, don't, don't think that's very realistic. So, I think that these are more realistic to what real life is, or at least in my experience of what I've experienced being in the workplace. And remember, I've been a journalist in the workplace, so my workplace experiences may differ from yours. But let's get into it. So, the first accommodation that I've been approved for is an alternative environment while taking a test. So for a student that takes classes during the day, that means that during your test period, you will go to school. You will go to the learning commons and take your test in the learning commons instead of taking your test in the classroom. For me, this is because I do sometimes get distracted. Uh, one accommodation that I don't have, because I don't have a reading disability, but was very helpful for me when I was in high school, was to have someone reading my tests to me, because it was a way of being able to focus better. Uh, and I think that just being in a separate environment, being in a quiet environment, and only having to focus on the test I think is going to be much better for me. So that's why I have this accommodation. The next is um, extended time when taking exams. And this is just kind of a very standard accommodation to have extra time. I have one and a half time, which just means that, you know, if it's a three hour exam, then I have four and a half hours to complete the exam. The next is the use of a stress fall or fidget tools in class. Now this may, for people who don't have autism or don't have some type of disability that impacts their ability to focus, this may seem counterproductive. It may seem like it would make you focus more on the toy, the toy, than the, uh, what's going on in class, but for me personally, it does help me focus. It helps me kind of 
keep my brain from wandering because my hands are doing something so my ears and my eyes can focus on the exam. And what am I going to use? I'm probably going to be taking my Rubik's Cube with me to class um, and kind of keeping it in a way that it's not distracting because I don't want to be distracting for the professor or the other students, but I do want to be able to focus. Um, the next is a very important one to me, and that's occasional absences. Um, with some of my conditions, it might be hard to walk to class. It might be that I have to go to the emergency room for my diabetes. I hope not, but it might that might happen. There's a lot of things that could happen that would make me have to miss class that are linked to my disabilities. So instead of having to worry about like, oh no, if I go to the emergency room, I'm, I'm going to fail my class because I'll have too many absences. I have something that says that, hey, I'm allowed to miss class when it's due to any type of disability related thing. This does also include mental health days. Um, I'm not sure how many mental health days I'm going to be taking because, you know, I haven't really taken mental health days before. I really haven't had the uh, time to take just a day off of work because all of my sick days when I worked at talk, I uh, went to going to doctor's appointments and all of my sick days when I worked at KCAU went to being in the hospital, but if I need to take a mental health day, I'm able to take a mental health day. And the way this works, it does not mean unlimited absences. It means you and your professor sit down and decide what is a reasonable number of extra absences that you can have uh, without failing the class, and then there is an agreement between you, the professor, and the disability services office that says that these are the absences that are allowed uh, under your accommodation. The next one is a very important one for me. Um, and this is one that I actually had when I was in high school. I didn't have it in college. I don't remember why I didn't have it when I went to KCKCC, but it's uh, in class breaks, which means that I will be able to take up to 10 minute break once an hour for the duration of my classes. My classes are three hours long, so I could take theoretically up to 30 minutes of breaks. Uh, I don't anticipate this happening, but sometimes, you know, I, with autism, I sometimes get frustrated and I sometimes need to go outside and take a breather and come back in. Um, I've always accommodated this just fine in the workplace by, like, going to the bathroom or going to get something out of the vending machine or going to plug my phone in or going to fill up my water. So that's something that is perfectly able to accommodate in the workplace. Um, but obviously in a class they kind of expect you to be there for the whole three hours, so this accommodation just gives me the opportunity to say, hey, I need to take a break, I'm getting frustrated, and it allows me to kind of... So I've never had an autistic meltdown um, in the workplace, ever, but it allows me to kind of head off those frustrations that lead to that, so that's why it's a good accommodation for me. Um, the next one is actually related to my physical disability and it's related to my hypermobility spectrum disorder. I, on some very rare occasions, deal with hand pain and deal with just in general not really being able to do a lot of handwriting. It's quite painful for me and so I have an accommodation that says that I'm allowed to have a note taker, which is someone that can take notes in class and can give them to me. Or, uh, it can be someone who, um, or it can be that a professor has notes and they t make a copy of them and give them to me. Obviously, I don't get this accommodation if I'm not there that day, but, uh, if I am there, then I can get a copy of notes. This is an accommodation that is hit or miss for me because when I was a student at the community college, they used, um, 
you know, the multiple copy paper where it's like there's a red, there's a, not a red, a white, a pink, and a yellow, and they did that for notes, and it didn't copy very well, so it was incredibly hard to read the notes, and, uh, I think that I'll still be taking some notes, but this kind of makes it to where I don't have to copy down every single word, um, because I am concerned about that if it's a lot of handwriting, because like I said, I just can't do it. Um, the next one is the use of a recorder, and I think that this is going to be helpful in helping me study, um, just because I might not be able to, because I won't be taking, I mean, I will be taking notes, but maybe not the way that I would want to, because, like, whenever I took notes, and even before my hand stuff got bad, when I would take notes, uh, in city council meetings, I would draw tables, I would draw arrows, I would do figures, I would do a lot of different things that I'm not going to be able to do if I'm, we're going to talk about in a minute, but if I'm taking notes on a computer or getting somebody else's notes, so then I'll be able to listen to the lecture again and be able to hear uh, what went on and be able to maybe decipher the notes a little bit better. Um, the next accommodation is working alone, and this is one that I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to use or not. We put it on there to see if it would be helpful. I don't know if it will be or not, and if it's not helpful, I'm not going to use it. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to see if it's helpful if there are some, because I mean, being a city manager is definitely a group project, but there's a lot of working on your own. And I sometimes have had difficulties with doing group projects, um, especially because for me, I have some difficulty, I guess I'll say I have some difficulties with group projects and group hierarchies that it can be difficult to do group projects, but I am going to try not to use the accommodation, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. And then we get to the word processor part of my accommodations, which is basically saying that I'm able to use my laptop to take notes and do tests, which is very important if I am having a hard time doing handwriting, because even though I have in the past, I believe if I remember, like I have in the past had a difficult time typing, but when I had a difficult time typing, it was when I was doing just a lot of typing all the time. Like, uh, I believe at KCIU, I had a little bit of struggles with my hands at the Hawkeye in 2021. For months, I had struggles with my hands. But for the most part, it's much easier to do things with my hands as far as typing than it is to do physical writing. So there's that. Uh, and then my last accommodation is use of noise canceling headphones. Again, I don't know if this is going to be helpful or not. It was an accommodation that was offered to me, so we'll see. I don't even know if I'll be having exams or not, because like, in undergrad, we didn't have exams in political science, we just wrote papers. That was how we displayed our knowledge. We had papers and we had participation. That's what we did. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to update you guys on my accommodations at about the halfway mark of the semester, so probably sometime in October, and then I'll do another video in December once I get back home kind of talking about how the accommodations went, how it went with my professors, all of that. Um, I don't know how it's going to go with professors. I don't know if professors have had disabled students uh, in their classes that have had accommodations. I feel like I have quite a few accommodations, but they're also very situational, so I don't know how professors are going to respond to that, so I will update you on that. And yeah, um, I think that I'm going to be making a lot more disabled in college videos just because I think it's relevant. I see it on my TikTok all the time. 
there's lots of college students with disabilities, but I don't see as many, like, videos being made about the actual mechanics of being a disabled college student, so I think that, I don't know, let me know, do you want hashtag the disabled college student life? <laughs> hashtag the disabled grad student life? Um, let me know. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Next week there's going to be a pre-Chicago vlog of me traveling to Chicago and uh, getting to the freehand. Our friend the freehand, if you watched the sh Chicago vlog, you'll remember what I'm talking about. Um, and then, I think that's about it. Alright, take care guys. Bye.